This is App Lab, and this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use checkboxes in apps. Pretty important things to be creating and designing app apps with. So I clicked on design. What I'm going to do is just throw in a, oop, not a radio button right now, but checkboxes. One, two, three. And then I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, dog label. And this is going to say dog. <laughs> um, I don't know why that's funny, but it is. And then I'm going to say cat label. And this is going to say cat. Yep, cat. And then other label. And this is going to say other pretty straightforward here and we can, well, apparently not. Uh, we can change the size if we want, but regardless, I'm just gonna leave these as checkbox one, checkbox two, checkbox three. You really shouldn't, normally you would name them like dog check or cat check. That way you can actually keep track of what is going on. Now I'm gonna put in a submit button and I'm just gonna title this submit BTN and submit. Okay. Now let's have another page, another screen, and I'm going to say dog screen. And so what we want is for the computer to understand what has been selected or for us to be able to react what has been selected based on, well, the user's input. Uh, is there a bone? What could symbolize a dog? Happy, because dogs are awesome. Boom. So here's our dog page. And then let's throw on a different screen and cat screen. And then image. And this is going to get offensive, but not a huge fat cat fan. So sorry, people, but thumbs down it is. All right. Thumbs down and then whatever, red. If we wanted to display some information as well, let's see what we got. Screen one was this, cat, dog. Okay, so what we could do is, you could create a variable to hold the info. So if we wanted to use what you chose, we could also do that. So. For instance, I'm only going to do this on one just so we don't take up a bazillion hours because you can plan this out and build this out yourself. But uh, this text will say hello and I'm ranking it say hello because dog screen label dog screen uh, because I want to show you how to change it. So what we'll do now is start coding and screen one and we need an on event and it's just going to be on the event that what it that submit submit button is clicked what do we want to have happen well first to show you the values actually on the event that submit button is clicked i'm going to say set property and I'm gonna do dog label, right? This guy right here, dog label and text. And what am I gonna have it equal to? Well, let's have it equal to whatever this checkbox equals. And checkboxes are kind of weird because they are only set right here, get checked. Um, to true or false. So let's see, checkbox one or checkbox two, we're going to check on. I'm just going to call this variable two. And then what am I going to set the text? Well, if I'm going to set it to be equal to a variable, I'm going to delete all that, write the word two. Um, oh, I guess this is for the dog label. So check, well, whatever. Cat label it is. All right, let's hit run. And if I hit submit, false, right? Because two right now is equal to false. What if I do this? True. So if I set a variable equal to this, 
maybe I want cat to be equal, it will hold true or false. It gets the checkbox. If there's a check in it, it is true. If there's not a check, that is false. And that's how this can be used to navigate to other pages, right? And you can even do this, by the way. You don't have to have a variable for it. Whoops, I'm gonna do Control Z. You can put it down here if you want it. So what I would do then is to navigate to another page, I would use a control. And so I'm gonna say if, and maybe I'll say get checkbox one, which remember is the dog. Let me do another plus here. And then I'm gonna go to copy paste because it's faster. Always be careful when you do this though. Get checkbox two. So if this is equal to true, and the only way it's equal to true if it's actually checked, then we're going to go to page, real quick, let me get rid of set property, get rid of this. Then we're gonna go set the screen. So where you would set screen to what? Well, the dog screen, right? Dog screen, else if a cat is true, what are we gonna do? We're gonna set the screen to what? Well, the cat screen. Let me X that. So now it should change based on if checkbox one is checked and if checkbox two is checked. Let me check cat, hit submit. So sometimes code.org doesn't function properly. I'm gonna refresh my computer. I'm gonna hit F5 on mine, but it's the arrow up at the top next to the address bar, I'm gonna just refresh the screen because sometimes it will mess up in block mode. Sometimes you have to go into text mode, then you have to refresh it, and then you have to go back because my code is correct. So now let's try it out. I'm gonna hit run, I'm gonna click on dog and hit submit, and there we are. We just went to dog, I'm gonna click run, I can click on cat, I can hit submit. And now say they wanted to get really fancy, what if you wanted to take them somewhere only if both check boxes were checked? Well, in that case, what you could do is you would wanna check that first, but you could do a, let's add a screen. I'm just gonna uh, change the color, one, two, three. Oh, there we go, cool. So that's how we'll know if we're on this screen. What we could do is if we wanna know if both buttons are checked, we could add in another else, else if, and I'm gonna actually take this down one because you would have to do this first to check for these situations before you would check for single ones. Because if they're both checked, we would hit this, this would be true and it would never check both. So if you wanna check for both things being checked, we would use an and and conditional operator, all right? And then I'm just gonna show text real quick because copy and paste is easier. What I'm doing is hitting command C on my keyboard Command C, uh, I mean, Control C on my keyboard, Command C if you're on a Mac, and then Command V. So, oops, that was too much. Oh, no, it wasn't. Control, I'm redoing that undo. I have one extra parenthesis here. There we are. So now this checks if both are checked, because this is only true if both of these are checked. And then what was I gonna do? Well, if both of those are checked, I can set the screen to that new screen I just added, which I didn't name, called screen two. And let me get rid of this. Let's try it out. Dog, cat, submit, new screen. Now if I do run and still just do cat, submit. But I, again, I wanna point out, let's just flip these real quick. Oop. I'm gonna drag that guy down here and drag that down here. Drag this up here, here, okay? Put this on spot two. Now, if I do my and and right here, it's never gonna happen. And that is because if I have uh, box one checked, if I have dog checked, I hit submit, and it's always gonna go to the dog screen. Even if I check both of them, because it doesn't care if I have both checked, it only cares if I have box one checked. So it says, yes, this is true, 
runs this, we go to the dog screen and doesn't run the rest. This is why if you want to check for two, you have to have it at the top. But yeah, and that's how you can really put together a nice system of filling out forms or using checkboxes in application for movement. I hope you're building something awesome.